Hello and welcome to What the Hey, more specifically today, book review with a boy. The book that I'm talking about today is pretty different in terms of both the writing and in terms of the content and style, which is exciting. Also, this book is exciting because it covers a topic I've been getting into for about the past year and spending money and time into because eventually I want to have a motorcycle, but before I do that, I feel like I must read and learn about the motorcycle so that I feel legit about what I'm getting into. Also today, I'm wearing some epic like cruiser motorcycle socks, so I feel like I'm adequate to talk about what I'm talking about today. So for this video, what I'm going to be doing is going off of notes that I have on my phone from reading and thinking about the book and everything after I went through all of it, uh, but I'm also going to hopefully be sharing pictures from the book and just giving my general opinion about it and how relevant I feel it is to like motorcycle stuff, so here we go. So first and foremost, this book is obviously called Ultimate Harley Davidson New Edition, so very fancy, and it's written by Hugo Wilson, which is like this British guy who's written a lot of stuff about motorcycles. He also grew up with motorcycles, but he has like a British magazine and stuff about motorcycles. So this guy has got a pretty wide motorcycle history, which feels cool. Another person that I feel like I have to give credit to would be Dave King, who is the guy who took a lot of the pictures of the motorcycles in this book. And hopefully I'll be able to find links and stuff to the people who helped contribute to the book, as well as links to the book itself. So if you want to eventually read this book yourself, uh, go to the description because I'll have stuff for that. Also another background fact about this book is it was published by Dorling Kindersley, I believe is how you say that, which is like the really famous publishing company that does a lot of books similar to this one with like a lot of pictures. It's mainly meant for like youngerish kids and adults, but it like it helps you to learn stuff through pictures, which is something that I can relate to. If I could relate to any Disney animated character, I would probably say it'd be Gaston because he likes to read books with pictures, and so do I. Um, and that's why this book is really helpful, but I'll talk about that later. So in regard as to whether or not you feel like this book may or may not be easy to go through, it's only nine chapters and about 216 pages. And as I'll go on to show you, most of the pages are filled up with pictures of like blown up images of the motorcycles. So really it doesn't require a lot of reading. There's just a lot of helpful facts and information about the motorcycles. So if you're more so into it because of the visual side of things, I would say this is a good book to get into. Similarly to that, really there's only about 22 pages of major reading in the beginning of the book and that's dealing with like Harley Davidson's history. So if you're more so into that kind of stuff, there's a smaller section of that, but that's still there. But most of the book, aside from the history, is split up into the types of bikes that they're talking about. Specifically with this book, the different sections of bikes that they talk about are early bikes, early innovations, side valves, OHV big twins, post-war small bikes, sportsters, recent big twins, V-Rod, and sports bikes. So if you're a really big fan of Harley Davidson specifically and you like specific bikes, there's most likely a section that talks about it. So what makes this book review interesting is that one, this is a book about motorcycles, how exciting, but two, this book doesn't necessarily contain a plot. So really the 216 pages aren't that hard to go through if you're only looking for something specific. Pacific. Personally, I'm someone who really enjoys both history as well as motorcycles. And as I've said, although the history section in this book isn't that long, it's still important to read through because this book is mainly meant for people who really like Harley Davidson, quite literally because most of the bikes in this book are Harley Davidson name brand bikes. But even if you're someone who's not really into history, I would say the beginning section is still important to read through because obviously it explains the origins of like the four founding fathers of Harley Davidson getting together in Milwaukee and like starting their first few bikes and then like upgrading them and changing them depending on the market and like what people wanted from their bikes. Which I would argue that a big chunk of the history section of this book deals with like really recognizable factors of Harley Davidson. Which one of the things that this book mentions a lot is the fact that Harley Davidson takes a lot of pride in the fact that they were basically the ones to come up with like the 45 degree F head V twin engine, which was basically an innovation and upgrade from like the single cylinder engine because the 45 degree one kind of gave the motorcycle more power, but also you could hear it go vroom vroom more. So, you know, that's pretty fun. Another facet of the history section of this book is that it delves in into like the ups and downs of the general motorcycle market, but also within Harley Davidson. 
Like if someone asked you to picture what a motorcycle looks like, what you'll most likely think of is something that looks similar to a Harley Davidson. However, this book does go into the history of how Harley Davidson has had to compete with other markets and other brands like Triumph and Indian to try and appeal to as many people as they can, both visually as well as with like the power and like the efficiency of their motorcycle engines. However, the reason as to why Harley Davidson is a motorcycle brand name that a lot of people are familiar with is the fact that it's lasted from like 1903 basically until now. Which if you think of like Harley Davidson riders, you'll probably think of like big tough guys with beards and like cool helmets and like big scary jackets and their bikes go broom broom. And that's kind of like a cult thing almost. Like people who have Harley Davidsons are like, I have a Harley Davidson. You should be scared, but also it's really cool. But the reason as to why Harley Davidson is so well known is not only because of the general community of people who have those bikes and there's different events for them so people like travel all over the place and stuff um, but also because of like the general vision and like the purpose of having those bikes um, because another thing that this book goes into is the fact that Harley Davidson and the bikes that they create are kind of supposed to envision like the American dream of freedom and like traveling and just exploring and just having a good time because some of the history section as well as just some of the general pages in the book do explain the significance to the visual and like mechanical changes to the motorcycles that represented how people were in terms of the culture and economy at the time in the United States as well as in Europe. So the book does a fantastic job of explaining why the bikes looked a certain way during certain periods of time from both like a historical perspective as well as just like a general observational like cultural perspective. Like the book does a good job of not always focusing on history but it does include some certain time periods or world events like economic decline um, or like World War I, World War II just to explain why the Harley Davidson made the choices that it did to create their bikes a certain way. They also do a really cool thing with explaining the relevance of Harley Davidson bikes in other things aside from just people riding them. Like occasionally they mention movies like Easy Rider, I think is one they bring up quite a bit that has the visual of a really cool like American themed chopper motorcycle going down the road. So when people saw that, they saw the Harley Davidson bikes and were like, I want to have one. And then they occasionally mention people like Elvis Presley who had a motorcycle and they're like, now I got to get a Harley Davidson so I can be cool like Elvis Presley. Let's go. So aside from the general history section of this book that is included, I wanted to talk about the visual aspects of this book because it's, it's kind of my favorite part. So even from the cover, you can see that they use a lot of pictures of motorcycles. And I'll show pictures that I took while I was reading the book like late at night so you can kind of see which bikes that I really liked. Um, but anyways, as you can kind of see, the pictures themselves of the bikes are really blown up so you can literally see pretty much every detail of the bike. And what's really cool about the pictures that they chose and the way that they set this book up when you get past the history section is the fact that once again the bike looks super big on the page and the pictures are really clear but there's also like little lines and little blurbs explaining the different parts of the motorcycles. Because for me, something that I really want to focus on before I get a motorcycle is not just understanding how to actually ride and stand up on the thing and not fall down, but also the different parts of the motorcycle. Because of course you can like pay someone to fix your motorcycle and like have them understand everything, but also I want to understand everything. I want to be edumacated about my motorcycle. So for me, I really appreciated the fact that there's like a lot of motorcycle vocabulary and terms that I was not familiar with. And although there's some that I'm still confused about, um, a lot more of them make sense or it's like they explain it at least so you're not completely lost. Like I would definitely say this book is really good for people who are very familiar with motorcycles already, especially if you're really into Harley Davidson motorcycles. But if you're just also learning about motorcycles, it's pretty cool. There's also kind of on different corners of the pages like specifications about each individual bike so it's like oh this bike had this thing changed or it's like it could go this speed or this headlight was placed here for this reason. So they have like little small sections about information for the bikes but they also have kind of large columns just so you can be more informed especially if there's a specific bike that you're wanting to learn about. 
Another cool thing that this book does is the fact that they pull in quotes from not only like motorcycle historians, but people that own Harley Davidsons or people that are familiar with the history that explain the significance to certain bike evolutions or modifications and stuff. So you're not just getting facts and opinions from Hugo Wilson, even though we love you, Hugo Wilson, you're epic. But in general, it's just really cool to hear words from people who are familiar with the history or just people who have grown up with motorcycles so they can share why certain modifications and stuff were important at the time. For example, on page 91, I'm looking at this cool like blue motorcycle and they say the 1965 FLH bikes were the first Harley Big Twins to be equipped with electric starters and the only electric glides powered by the pan head engine. So it's people who know what they're talking about and they include why this stuff is important to know. Another cool small thing about this book is the fact that they have like a little timeline of the bikes, kind of more so in the history section of the book, that they show the gradual evolution and they have little pictures of the specific bikes that made really big impacts. So that really helps me as a history person because I like to see things laid out in timelines. So it's cool. But anyways, one of the main reasons why I like this book is one, because it's about motorcycles. Two, it has a lot of really clear and big images of motorcycles so you can actually see what they're talking about and they point out specific aspects of the bikes. Um, but then three, it's about Harley Davidson and me personally, whenever I think of Harley Davidson, I think of like those super big chunky like chopper like police motorcycles and I never really liked Harley Davidson. Davidson because I had that point of view that that was all the bikes they ever sold. So I kind of wanted to look at this book to kind of disprove that because I was like, I know they don't just sell super big chunky motorcycles with the like really big windshields, which I don't know why for some reason that doesn't appeal to me because it just really doesn't. And every time I've seen someone with a Harley Davidson, it's always a motorcycle like that and they're always loud and stuff. So that's just the picture I always had in my mind, but I was able to disprove that and see bikes that I really liked. Um, like as I showed earlier, there's some more pictures of motorcycles that I really liked in this book. Uh, so really Harley Davidson is not just limited to one type of bike despite the fact that that's what I thought it was. And it's very interesting because this book makes the really big case that a lot of people who are in I would say like the cult and family of Harley Davidson is the fact that like the name brand obviously is very big but all these people are in a community of like motorcycle enthusiasts who really like these bikes because the brand has been around for forever and it's kind of like an envisionment of like the American dream which makes me curious because I feel like right now the American dream is not very alive so I don't know what's going to happen with the general market and that general message because things are interesting right now um, but I just kind of wanted to learn about the history and also just look at really pretty motorcycles. Me personally I don't know if I'd ever be able to get a Harley Davidson and the main reason why I say that is because they are expensive. It really depends on the type of bike that you're wanting to get and whether it's new or it's used but the fact that Harley Davidson is such a big name brand for a motorcycle they get really expensive so it's kind of the thing of like you have to really save up for it and kind of know what you really want. I have gone into a Harley Davidson motorcycle dealership. All the bikes were so pretty. All the people were super nice. I felt so small and tiny walking in there because it was all these really tough looking dudes, but they are all really nice and they had helpful information. So I had a good time like going in there. I didn't buy a bike because I don't have that kind of money, but I was looking because I have obviously motorcycle socks. Um, you didn't really see it, Mo uh, motorcycle socks. Um, but I also have boots now. Um, and the next thing I'm really saving up for is a helmet. So I'm just trying to learn all the background and information the knowledge stuff. So books like this are very helpful. So once again, I would say that this book is really good if you're just starting to learn about motorcycles. I would say it's even better if you're someone who's already familiar with motorcycles um, and you have a specific fascination with Harley Davidson because once again, some of the jargon and stuff of motorcycle parts and some of the stuff with the engines with like the twin head engines and like the knuckle head stuff, like some of that stuff was confusing, but it was good to learn. Um, so in general, I would say this is a very helpful book, especially if you like pictures because I do. 
Once again, I will try to find links and information on the people who helped like contribute to publishing and creating this book. Uh, so if you want to look more into what they do, um, I'll also try to find links and places as to where you can buy this book. I personally picked it up from my local library. So if you can do the same, I would definitely suggest doing so because libraries are epic and you can like read books for free and they can be hardcover, which is epic. And you don't have to spend money on them, which is great. Now, what's even more epic is the fact that I have more motorcycle books to review in the future. I don't know why my library has so many Harley Davidson books, uh, but I read through this one and I'll be reviewing it soon. It's called the Harley Davidson book. Very easy title, but very good book. A lot of great pictures, but I'll talk about this later as well. I'll also be reviewing this one at some point. This one I have not read through yet, so I have no idea what I'm getting into, but it's also called The Motorcycle. So I try to get books for myself for like learning about motorcycles that are hopefully easy to understand because I want to understand things about them and everything. Um, but hopefully this will be good. But I'll be reviewing more motorcycle books in the future. If you have any recommendations, let me know. But that was a lot of information about Harley Davidson and this book. I didn't want to go too much into depth with it because I don't want to spoil the things for you if you're actually going to read it. If you're not, that's okay. Just know it's a really good book about Harley Davidson and motorcycles. Very pretty pictures. Very nice book. I liked it. But once again, I'll be putting links and information in the description for you if you want to do your own research. Also, if there are any books that you would recommend me read, feel free to do so. Uh, but that is it. So thank you for watching. Bye.